Hey, I'm Rachel, the CEO of Intrinio. In this video, I'm gonna give you my top five tips for FinTech startup fundraising. teach a lot of principles that apply universally to all types of startups in a variety of industries, but fintech founders have a host of challenges unique to the gritty capital markets industry. So here are my top five tips for fintech startup fundraisers. Tip number one, remember that the fundraising process should be an interview in both directions. It's very easy to succumb to nerves when going through the fintech fundraising process. There's a lot on the line and your performance can make or break your business. Complex questions will be thrown at you rapidly and founders tend to get reactive instead of thoughtful and proactive. Now don't get me wrong, you've got to explain your business and answer those questions. But fundraising is more like dating than it is like an interview. This should be a two-way conversation. Taking somebody's money is serious for you. You're marrying them to your business for, usually, the lifetime of the venture. You're accountable to this investor or firm, and you'll be in regular communication with them sometimes every single day. They may even take a board seat and have significant control over decisions. Put simply, you sure as hell better like them, and they better provide some value. So. You've got to ask them about that. Consider asking questions like, how many deals do you make in a year? Or what do you bring to the table besides money? Try how active of an investor are you? Or how much capital is left in your current fund? Whatever you do, get just as curious about this investor as they are about you. Okay, tip number two. Cast a wide net in the beginning to build relationships, but quickly narrow, focus, and get picky. The success rate of getting a yes from an investor is so low that it's a necessity in the early stages of your fundraising process to cast a wide net. But the timing of this one can get tricky. Casting a wide net will take 110% of your time as a founder. It's exhausting. You'll be repeating yourself and your pitch over and over, pitching on the spot day after day, and managing a demanding pipeline of prospects. After a certain point, your focus must narrow. Following on the heels of tip number one that we just covered, asking good questions can help you narrow down your list of prospects quickly. Don't waste time on investors if you know they aren't right for you. They will try to demand your attention and it will weigh you down. So start by building relationships, practicing and casting a wide net, but get picky and focused as soon as you can. Tip number three, have your house in order. The due diligence part of the fundraising process is a beast. Coming to the table with your house in order can make a huge difference in the length of time it takes to complete this process. Not only will it speed things up, but it sends a great message to investors. You are organized, diligent, and smart. Get prepared for a code review with your engineering team. Organize and categorize all of your contracts and legal documents. Clean up and prepare beautiful, straightforward financials with your CFO. And rid yourself of any unnecessary liabilities. This can mean debt, risky contracts, and even sometimes people. Coming to the negotiating table with a clean house will pay dividends down the road. Tip number four, start fundraising before you need the money. This tip, it's pretty straightforward. Fundraising when you need the money doesn't give you much leverage. It displays poor financial management to potential investors, and it puts you in a terrible headspace for pitching your business. If you don't start the fundraising process before you need to, Several factors can creep up on you that are often entirely out of your hands. Economic conditions could switch at a moment's notice. Large customers could drop off. Lawsuits can happen. Nobody likes to think about these things, but you have to prepare for them. And managing risk is a major part of your job as a founder or CEO. You want to be heading into that fundraising process with a story that capital can help you scale exponentially, not that you need it to survive. Time and time again, founders find themselves negotiating from a place of desperation, never having intended to do so. This one will creep up on you, so be conscious and proactive about it. The last tip I have for all of my fintech fundraisers is to be prepared to defend your position in today's market. Fundraising for a fintech startup today looks a lot different than it did 20, 10, even two years ago. We've been hit with a major tech crash, a fintech black hole, a crypto implosion, 
economic volatility and uncertainty, a massive devaluation of all things fintech. In general, all fintech founders, regardless of their niche, should be prepared to explain why they will thrive in an environment as tough as this. If you're B2C or retail focused, you need to have your own flavor of defense ready. Investors are not keen on the profitability of B2C plays in the fintech space or the capital that it takes to cast a wide enough net to make real money in the retail space. Retail trading is still up, but this part of the market is volatile, finicky, and very crowded. If you're making an institutional play, be aware of how hard partnering with financial firms is, how much corporate innovation has slowed, and how rarely startup corporate partnerships actually work. Plus, you've got long ass sales cycles and an equally crowded space. Make sure you are up to speed with all of these challenges and ready to defend your model to future investors. Okay, we just covered my top five tips for fintech startup fundraising. Here's a review. The fundraising process should be an interview in both directions. Cast a wide net in the beginning to build relationships, but quickly narrow, focus, and get picky. Have your house in order. Start fundraising before you need the money. And lastly, be prepared to defend your position in today's market. Hopefully this will be helpful as you head out on your own fundraising journey in 2024. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments below. And don't forget to like and to subscribe to stay up to speed with content like this. Thanks for listening.